The Earth is, without a doubt, a fascinating puzzle. There is a lot to learn and experience here, as well as a lot to see. People have been able to find numerous natural wonders around the world over the years. They are dispersed among 195 nations and 7 continents. They leave you speechless and encourage you to learn more about this world. There is still a great deal of mystery about the past and present of our wonderful planet. And perhaps for that reason, it always feels so exciting to learn about the new information that scientists and archaeologists uncover. Oh, wow. From the ships passing through the night and the death of the discovery of a 3,000 year old city, here are 20 strangest discoveries found on Earth. Number 20. Stone Spheres in Costa Rica For our first topic, we'll be showing you how a researcher discovers what no one was supposed to see. On the Dicus Delta, on the Isla de Cao, Costa Rica, is home to more than 300 petrospheres, collectively known as Stone Spheres. These discovered treasures are also referred to as Bolas de Piedra, literally stone balls. The spheres are sometimes referred to as the Diku Sphere since they are frequently associated with the extinct Diku civilization. They are the stone sculptures from Istmo Colombian region that are well known. Although it is believed that they were arranged in rows along the route to the chief's homes, it's still unclear what they exactly meant. The spheres weigh up to 15 tons and range in size from a few centimeters to over 6.6 .6 feet in diameter. The majority are made of gabbro, a coarse grained rock similar to basalt. There are about 12 composed of sandstone and another 12 made of limestone that is rich in shells. They resemble creations that were polished with sand after being hammered with other rocks and natural stones. The level of craftsmanship and accuracy of work varies greatly. Although some incomplete spheres still exist on the hill, the gabbro originated from locations in the hills many kilometers away from where the finished spheres are discovered. They are used as ornaments. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. That takes us to this video's strange topic. This is a picture of a cloud antelope that was accidentally created by researchers two decades ago. In all honesty, the so-called cloud antelope is actually too peculiar and unusual to be true. Not much is known about this bizarre creature, but it is said that they are about 17 inches long and 9.5 feet tall. Of course, the African savanna or the South American Amazon is home to much wonderful wildlife. Normally, a simple correction would have shown the credulous person that things are not what they seem to be. However, it appears that a lot of individuals genuinely think that animals like the cloud antelope exist. So let us know what you think about it in the comment section with the hashtag strange topic. That being said, let's move on. Number 19. Antikythera Mechanism the Antikythera mechanism was a mechanical tool used by the ancient Greeks to compute and show data regarding celestial occurrences. The ruins of this ancient computer, which are now on exhibit in the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, were discovered in 1901 inside the wreckage of a commerce ship that went down in the Mediterranean Sea in the first half of the first century BCE, close to the island of Antikythera. Current estimates place the date of its creation at 100 BCE, give or take 30 years. Its significance was realized when radiographic pictures revealed that the remaining shards had 30 gear wheels, the first known set of scientific dials or scales. No other intricate geared mechanism is known from antiquity or even from the construction of medieval cathedral clocks a thousand years later. A long history of mechanical astronomical displays only has one known physical survivor, the Antikythera mechanism. References in Greco-Roman literature, particularly in the descriptions given by Marcus Tullius Cicero, that span from Archimedes to a poetic reference in the late 4th or early 5th century CE, suggesting that such devices were widely used. However, it's still unknown what the Antikythera mechanism is for. Furthermore, it's unknown if the Greco-Roman civilization made use of the advanced mechanical design abilities and bronze gear technologies involved in its creation for many other purposes. Number 18. Qin Shi Huang's Tomb In the Chinese city of Xi'an Lingtong District in the Shangji province, 
stands the first Qin Emperor's mausoleum. This mausoleum, which stands beneath a 76 meter tall bomb mound shaped like a truncated pyramid, was built over the course of 38 years, from 246 to 208 BCE. The mausoleum's design is based on the division of the Qin capital Xianyang into inner and outer cities. The inner city is 2.5 kilometers (1.55 miles) in circumference, whereas the outer one is 6.3 kilometers. The tomb faces east and is situated in the southwest corner of the inner city. The core of the mausoleum's architectural complex is the main tomb chamber which houses the coffin and other burial items. However, the actual bomb has not yet been dug up, although it's full scale. Construction didn't begin until after Emperor Qin had defeated the six other major states and united China in 221 BCE. Work on the mausoleum started soon after his accession to the throne in 246 BCE, when he was yet 13 years old. Number 17. The Valley of the Whales the western desert of Egypt's Wadi al hitan or Whale Valley, is home to priceless fossil remnants of the earliest and currently extinct suborder of whales. The Archaeoceti, the evolution of the whale from a land-based animal to an ocean-going mammal, is one of the primary storylines represented by these fossils. The world's most significant location for the display of this stage of evolution is here. The shape and the way of life of these whales throughout their metamorphosis is eloquently portrayed. Such fossils are uncommon in this location due to their abundance, quality, concentration, and accessibility, as well as their position in a picturesque and protected landscape. The earliest archaeocetes can be seen in the last stages of losing their hind limbs in the fossils from al hitani Wadi al hatan which is located in the Wadi al rayyan protected area and was added to UNESCO's World Heritage List, under the natural criterion in 2005, is about 12 kilometers west of the imposing hill of Gerrit Genhenem. It's practically an open museum in the desert and is distinguished by a rich richness of both vertebrate and invertebrate fossils. Number 16. The Copper Squirrel Treasure The reader of the Copper Squirrel from Kerman is said to be on a quest to find lost treasure. Is this a literal or metaphorical quest for hidden treasure? Is this opposition even productive? The text's ability to engage the reader's imagination may be in most significant quality. The 900 or more ancient Jewish texts, known as the Dead Sea Scrolls, were discovered between 1947 and 1952, in 11 caverns close to the Dead Sea. The Copper Scroll stands out among these scrolls in terms of both its construction and its content. It's the only metal manuscript in existence. The other manuscripts are all constructed of papyrus or leather. The text is a catalog of treasures that points to the whereabouts of numerous hidden treasures dispersed over Palestine. The contents are similarly unique. Two silver scrolls were found by archaeologists in 1952 while exploring Cave 3. It was shown that they were taken from the same document. The original Kabr scroll was a lengthy strip formed by riveting together three thin metal sheets. In the past, one of the sheets had unintentionally broken off, and the two halves of the scroll were subsequently wrapped up separately. Number 15. Voynich Manuscript The Voynich Manuscript is an illustrated codex that was handwritten in the so-called Voynich's writing system. According to stylistic research, it may have been written in Italy during the Italian Renaissance on vellum that has been carbon dated to the early 15th century, 1404 to 1438. There is controversy around the manuscript's origins, author, and goal. There have been a number of theories put out, such as the notion that it is an otherwise unrecorded script for a created or natural language, an unread code, cipher, or another type of encryption or simply a pointless farce. There are indications that more passages are missing from the text, which has about 240 pages as of right now. Several pages can be folded into different sized sheets, with sections of the manuscript portraying people, fictional vegetation, astrological symbols, etc. The majority of the pages are covered in imaginative images or diagrams, some of which are badly colored. From the left to right is how the text is written. The manuscript is named after Polish-Lithuanian book trader Wilfred Voynich, who brought it in 1912. It has been kept in the Beneki Rare Book and Manuscript Library at Yale University since 1969. Number 14. Khufu Ships 
The ancient Egyptian full-size solar bark known as the Khufu ship is still intact. Around 2500 BC during the 4th dynasty of the Old Kingdom period of ancient Egypt, it was placed in a pit at the base of the Great Pyramid of the Pharaoh Khufu. It appears to have been a component of the comprehensive burial gods intended for use in the afterlife, together with other ancient Egyptian ships that were also buried. One of the oldest, biggest, and best preserved ancient ships is the Khufu ship, the world's oldest intact ship, measuring 142 feet long and 19 feet wide has been dubbed a marvel of woodcraft and can still fail if placed in a lake or river. There are no nails on the Khufu ship. Along with the puzzle piece jiggling, its creators used mortise and tenon joints, a form of peg and hole construction, to attach neighboring planks together. Additionally, they used rope woven from a grass called hafa to lash the hull boards together. The hull planks were not wrapped and the rope around through them, which could have encouraged leaks. Instead, thousands of V-shaped tunnels that they painstakingly cut into the inside faces of planks were used to move it. In fact, they stitched the ship together. Number 13. Nazca Lines Nazca lines can be classified into three categories, straight lines, geometric patterns, and visual representation. On the coastal plain, there are more than 800 straight lines, some of which are 30 miles long. In addition, there are more than 300 geometric patterns, including spirals, arrows, zigzags, and wavy lines, in addition to standard shapes like triangles, rectangles, and trapezoids. Approximately 70 different animals and vegetation are in the Nazca lines, some of which are as long as 1,200 feet. A spider, hummingbird, cactus, monkey, whale, llama, duck, flower, tree, lizard, and dog are a few examples. To put it another way, the Nazca lines are a group of enormous geoglyphs, which are patterns or motifs etched into the earth, and are situated in the coastal plain of Peru, about 250 miles, 400 kilometers south of Liema, Peru. The 2,000-year-old Nazca lines which were drawn by the ancient Nazca culture in South America and showed a variety of plants, animals, and shapes can only be completely appreciated from the air due to their enormous scale. The geoglyphs, which were recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994, have been researched for more than 80 years, but they continue to elude scientists. Number 12. The Rosetta Stone one of the most well-known items at the British Museum is the Rosetta Stone. But what is it exactly? The stone is a fragment of a larger stone slab that has shattered. It has a statement cut into it three different writing styles. It was a crucial piece of information that assisted specialists in learning how to decipher Egyptian hieroglyphs, which is known as a writing system that employed images as signs. An official letter known as an edict about the 204-181 to BC, King Ptolemy V is written on the stone. Over here! Come and take a look at this! Every temple in Egypt received copies of the decree, which was inscribed on enormous stone slabs called stelae. It claims that the king was backed by the priests of a Memphis temple. One of these copies is the Rosetta Stone, which is of utmost significance in Egyptology. Nobody knew how to interpret ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs when they were first found. Since people could still read ancient Greek and the inscriptions were identical in all three scripts, the Rosetta Stone was an invaluable tool for deciphering the hieroglyphs. You will be able to view the Rosetta Stone and other items that assisted researchers in deciphering hieroglyphs at a special exhibition, Hieroglyphs Unlocking Ancient Egypt, between October 13, 2022 and February 19, 2023. In Room 1, the Enlightenment Gallery, a replica of the Rosetta Stone is likewise touchable, and you may virtually visit it here using Google Street View. Number 11. The Lascaux Cave Paintings in the Dordogne area of southwest France, close to the village of Montagnac, is a network of caves known as Lascaux Cave. The inside walls and ceilings of the cave are covered with more than 600 parietal wall paintings. The paintings predominantly feature huge animals indicative of the surrounding contemporaneous fauna and consistent with the local Upper Paleolithic fossil record. The paintings are the result of the work of many generations, and after much dispute, their age is now typically considered to be around 17,000 years early Magdalenian. As part of the prehistoric sites and decorated caves of the Vizier Valley, 
Lasko was included on the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1979 due to its exceptional prehistoric artwork. It was founded on September 12, 1940 and was designated as a statutory historic monument in December of that same year. But the survival of these stunningly haunting prehistoric cave drawings is in jeopardy. More than 200 archaeologists, anthropologists, and other scientists recently met in Paris for a historic conference to examine the predicament of the valuable Lascaux relics and to find a way to protect them in the future. The symposium was overseen by Dr. Jean Klotz and held under the auspices of the French Ministry of Culture and Communication. Number 10. The Perry Rise Map a portion of a Turkish globe map from the early 16th century was uncovered in 1929 by researchers working in Turkey's Tokapi Palace Museum. It was dated 1513 and had a captain's signature, Peri Ibn Haji Muhammad Rais, which is Arabic for Admiral. It was created barely 21 years after Christopher Columbus first set foot in the New World and is now famously known as the Map of America. A third of the original map has been preserved and it reasonably accurately depicts the western shores of Europe, North Africa, and Brazil. The mythological island of Antilia as well as possible Japan are all represented along with a number of Atlantic islands such as the Azores and Canary Islands. The map's historical significance comes from its evidence of the breadth of New World discovery by around 1510 from its assertion that it was based on a lost Christopher Columbus chart. Puri also claimed to have used four Indian maps obtained from the Portuguese and ten Arab sources. Recent claims regarding the pre-modern discovery of the Antarctic coast have centered on the map. The Piri Rise map is currently housed in the Topkap Palace Library in Istanbul, Turkey. However, it's not typically on public display. Number 9. Stonehenge Three kilometers west of Amesbury in Wiltshire, England, is where Stonehenge is located. Atop linking horizontal stones is an outer ring of vertical Saracen standing stones that are each about 13 feet high, 7 feet broad, and weigh around 25 tons. A ring of smaller blue stones surrounds it. These contain freestanding trilithons, which are two larger vertical sarsens connected by a single lintel. The entire monument, which is now in ruins, is oriented toward the summer solstice dawn. The Neolithic and Bronze Age monument complex, with the densest concentration of structures in England, comprising several hundred tumuli, contains stones which are embedded in earthworks and burial mounds. Stonehenge, according to archaeologists, was built between 3000 and 2000 BC. Stonehenge, one of the most well-known sites in the UK, is recognized as a symbol of British culture. Since 1882, when the first successful law to safeguard historical monuments was established in Britain, it has been a legally protected scheduled ancient monument. From its earliest days, Stonehenge might have served as a cemetery. The ditch and bank were first dug about 3000 BC, and deposits containing human bone continued for at least another 500 years. Number 8. Lost Golden City Found in Egypt one of the most significant archaeological discoveries since Tutankhamun's tomb has been the unearthing of a 3,000-year-old metropolis that had been lost to the sands of Egypt. Renowned Egyptologist Zahi Huas revealed the location of the hidden golden city close to Luxor. He said that the discovery represented the largest example of the A10 ancient metropolis to have been found in Egypt. Within a few weeks of the excavation, beginning in September 2020, it was discovered. Amenhotep III, one of Egypt's most powerful pharaohs, ruled from 1391 to 1353 BC, and the city dates to this time. Pharaoh's eye and Tutankhamun, whose nearly complete tomb was found in the Valley of the Kings by the British archaeologist Howard Carter in 1922, continued to use the city. The discovery of this ancient city, in the opinion of Betsy Bryan, an Egyptology professor at John Hopkins University in Baltimore, is the second most significant archaeological find after the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. The city would provide a unique window into ancient Egyptian life at the height of the empire's prosperity. The excavation turned up numerous priceless artifacts, including jewelry, colored ceramics, scarab beetle amulets, and mud bricks with Amenhotep III seals. Around 500 kilometers south of the capital of Cairo, the crew started its excavations on the west bank of the Luxor, close to the Valley of the Kings. Number 7. Gobekli Tepe 
One of the most astounding archaeological discoveries of our time has been made by Klaus Schmidt six miles from Urfa, an ancient city in southeast Turkey. Enormous carved stones that are about 11,000 years old and were crafted and arranged by prehistoric people, who had not yet invented metal tools or even pottery. The megaliths date back to 6,000 years before Stonehenge. Gobekli Tepe is the name of the location and Schmidt, a German archaeologist, has spent more than a decade excavating there. It's certain that it is the location of the oldest temple in existence. The location saw its first use during the beginning of the Neolithic era, which in Southwest Asia marked the appearance of the first continuous human communities ever. Prehistorians concur that agriculture brought about the Neolithic Revolution, but they disagree as to whether cultivation led to settlement or the opposite. In this discussion, Gobekli Tepe has taken center stage. It's a massive complex that was constructed atop a rocky mountainside far from known water supplies, and it has so far failed to yield any conclusive proof of agriculture cultivation. The world's first temple was a sanctuary used by groups of nomadic hunter-gatherers from a vast area, with few or no permanent residents, according to German archaeologist and original site excavator Klaus Schmidt. Number 6. Derenkuyu Underground City the Derinkuyu underground city is a multi-level historic underground city in Turkey's Nevsehir province that reaches a depth of about 279 feet. It's one of the several underground complexes located across Cappadocia and is the largest underground city in Turkey to have been unearthed. Derinkuyu, this 20,000 person underground city was created to shield its occupants from wars and religious persecution. It included substantial stone doors to keep out intruders, a clever ventilation system, and a well to supply water to all residents. There were also numerous spaces utilized as beds, kitchens, and food storage facilities. With a school church and cellar for making wine and oil, the city also secured total isolation from the outer world. It also had a sufficient amount of livestock. One of the many underground communities in this region is Derinkuyu, which was formerly connected to other underground cities by miles of tunnels. Approximately 20 underground levels have been investigated so far, but only 8 of the city's 20 underground levels may be visited, and it's still unclear which culture exactly constructed it. Number 5. The Long Yu Grotos a group of 24 man-made caves known as Long Yu Caves was built into the sandstone geology of Fangguang Hill in the Chinese province of Zhejiang. In 1992, when local farmers accidentally drained several ponds, they found five huge man-made caverns and 19 smaller ones. The five caverns, which are separate from one another and range in size from 18 to 34 meters in height and have amazingly curving shapes that leave shaking imprints on the walls and ceilings, are each independently measured. Because the shape and formation were so different from other old caves, quarries, mines, or ceremonial caverns built in China throughout antiquity to entice tourists, It was once thought that the caves were a remote natural wonder. Further investigation revealed that each whole cavern has only one portal, which is connected to a vertical shaft with carved stairs and permits precipitation and surface runoff to enter the caverns. A system of drainage troughs, a few drainage channels, and a water trap were carved into the base of the cavern to regulate the water inflow. Since their first discovery, archaeologists and researchers have been looking into the questions of who, when, and why the Long Yu Caves were made. Only a Chinese poem by Zhu Zun, written in the 17th century, provides some verifiable provenance for any of these claims. There have been few historical records or datable material discovered to address any of these problems. Number 4. The Mount Owen Moa Claw a group of archaeologists came upon a strange and unsettling object nearly 30 years ago while conducting an exploration inside a sizable cave network on Mount Owen in New Zealand. They questioned whether their vision was blurry in the pitch black cave because they could not comprehend what was in front of them. A massive dinosaur-like claw that was still intact and covered in flesh and scales. The claw appeared to have come from a creature that had just passed away, according to how beautifully it had been preserved. Later, it was discovered that this enigmatic leg belonged to an ancient bird known as the Moa that vanished from the planet between 700 and 800 years ago, and was 3,300 years old. Moa actually made their debut roughly 8.5 million years ago. There were reportedly at least 10 different species of moa in the past. The moa, which has several subspecies that may grow over 10 feet in height, used to be the largest species of bird on the planet. Number 3. 
Moai Statues, Easter Island. Every so often, a new generation of internet rovers causes an old story to emerge and go popular. This is true of the news regarding the statues from Easter Island's bodies. Archaeologists on Easter Island first found in 1914 at least some of the megalithic statues known as Moai had underground torsos that had been covered up by erosion over many generations. But until a chain email with pictures of fully formed Easter Island statues were covering during digs in the 1950s and 2010s started going around in 2012, that information was mostly unknown to the general public. They are popularly known as the Easter Island Heads. This is a false impression stemming from images of statues partially obscured with the soil in the volcano Reno, Rarkau. All of these heads actually have whole bodies. There are about 1,000 statues there, averaging about half that size and weighing up to 86 tons each. The Reno Raraku volcano provided 95% of the material for the Moais. The choice of this place was made because it has significant amount of tuff, the same material that makes up the Moais from this volcano. Tuff, also known as Toki, is compacted volcanic ash that is simple to cut. This was required because the locals only possessed stone tools, not metal ones, to use for carving. Number 2. The Gate of the Sun The Gate of the Sun, also referred to as the Gateway of the Sun, is a monolith that the Tiwanaku culture of Bolivia carved into the shape of an arch or gateway at the site of Tijuanaco between 500 and 950 CE. This Andean civilization flourished around Lake Titicaca and the Andes of the western South America. At the height of around 12,549 feet above sea level, Tiwanaku is found close to the Lake Titicaca in Bolivia, close to La Paz. The Gate of the Sun was cut from a single block of stone and measures around 9.8 feet tall by 13 feet wide. It's thought to weigh 10 tons. The megalith was resting horizontally when it was uncovered by European explorers in the middle of the 19th century, and it had a sizable break through it. Even though it's thought that this is not where it originally stood, this is still unknown. It currently stands where it was discovered. One enormous block of andesite stone was used to sculpt the Gate of the Sun. It has a height of a little over 9 feet, a width of about 12.5 feet and a gate entrance that is 4.6 feet wide. The most noticeable aspect of the ancient relic is a bas-relief representation of a deity whose head appears to be ornamented with an intriguing headdress, or possibly they are rays radiating from its face in all directions. This feature lies just above the gate opening. Each of the deity's two hands is holding a staff. Some historians argue that the deity is the sun god. The image is also shown as the weeping god because some people think the marks on his face symbolize tears. More accounts state that this is a pan-Andean god and the ancestor of Via Carocha, the Inca creator god. Due to the gate's enigma, there have been many, often confusing and improbable interpretations of what it was used for. One even claimed that it was a portal to other dimensions. Number 1. Great Pyramids the Great Pyramid of Giza is the biggest pyramid in Egypt and houses Khufu's tomb from the 4th dynasty. The pyramid, the earliest of the seven wonders of the ancient world, was constructed in the early 26th century BC over a period of around 27 years and is the only one to have largely survived. It borders the current Giza in Greater Cairo, Egypt and is part of the Giza Pyramid Complex. For more than 3,800 years, the Great Pyramid held the record for the tallest man-made structure in the world when it was first stood at 481 feet. The pyramid's height was reduced through time to its current 454 feet by the removal of the majority of the smooth white limestone casing. What is seen today is the underlying core structure. The base was estimated to be about 755 feet in height, giving it a volume of nearly 2.6 million cubic meters, which also takes it into account an internal hill lock. One of the first notable writers to mention the pyramid was the ancient Greek historian Herodotus, who wrote in the 5th century BC. He covers the history of Egypt and the Great Pyramid in the second volume of his opus, The Histories. The fact that this account was written more than 2,000 years after the building of the structure indicates that Herodotus primarily learned his information from a variety of indirect sources, including low-ranking government officials and priests, Egyptian residents, 
Greek immigrants, and Herodotus' own interpreters. Herodotus claims that Khufu, who actually ruled after the Ramside period, erected the Great Pyramid. Herodotus asserts that Khufu was a tyrant, which may help to explain why the Greeks believed that such structures could only be created by the ruthless exploitation of the populace. Herodotus also claims that the edifice took 20 years to construct that 100,000 laborer gangs worked on in three months of shifts. That's all for 20 strangest discoveries found on Earth. Which one of them did you find the most intriguing? Let us know in the comment section. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.